So, Brandon, you're going to be preaching at the mission, right? Yes. What passage are you going to be using? I will be speaking from the book of Philemon, verses 4 through 7. Okay, and why did you pick that passage? I felt like that God led me to do the passage to get the word, not only the word, but as a reminder of everybody on on the purpose of prayer and giving thanks. Okay. Why is it so important that people in the mission hear, need to hear that message? Oh, for number one, it's a uh, part of our everyday life as a Christian to pray amongst ourselves amongst other people and with people or even in a group. So if you were living in the mission or even having to just go there, why would it be so important for you to pray while you're there? So that I can be able to do other stuff for myself and and have God on my side. Okay. Yeah, so whenever you're going through tough times, it's important that you have communication with God, right? Yeah. All right, I understand that. What's the closest you've ever been to being homeless? You ever worried about, man, where am I going to live? What am I going to eat? You ever felt that way? At times. Really? What makes you feel that way? Because I came close to uh, losing my job a couple of times. Okay. Uh, and to a point where I was completely broke, no money, and no way of paying for our utilities and mm -hmm. stuff. So what you're telling me is that, especially the way things are in this country right now, some people are just one or two paychecks away from being homeless. Yes. Right? Yes. It can happen to any of us. Yes. Okay. When you were going through those hard times of almost losing your job and, and all of those things, what type of things were you praying for during that time? I was praying that I wouldn't lose my job. Okay. Praying that things would pick up and, and or find, find another job. Okay. So you can imagine that other people were probably praying the same thing, right? Yes. That the mission... And some of them, because they don't have their job now, or whatever the situation, you can understand maybe how they might think God let them down, like he didn't answer their prayers. So what would you say to someone in a situation like that? I would say that uh, you must always, always keep praying that God does answer prayers. He may not answer them right off. But there might be a reason why that, that could have happened. Okay. God might have, probably has a person, uh, purpose for the reason why you do that, for that to happen. Because you might be able to tell somebody else the same, same story. Okay. Um, in your mind, I know you, you went to go visit, um, well, let me, let me start with this. You went to visit the mission the other night, right? Yes. Tell me about that a little bit. What was that like? It was a little bit nerve-wracking. Okay. Uh, I felt scared for the first time being over there. But after I was over there a few minutes, I got, got to where I can be able to talk to other people. Okay. Listen to what they had to say 
I also got to meet some of the people and everybody seemed nice and welcome was welcoming. Mm-hmm. How much of the Bible do you think those people get to hear? In other words, what what do you think their normal day to day activity is like? Uh, their normal, to me, their normal activity would be just waking up, walking around, and I know they have to clean up after themselves. Mm-hmm. They got a certain time limit that they got to eat and be in bed. And they at least hear the word at least, I think, once a day. Okay. So, it's very important that this message that you're going to bring, right? They've probably been looking for jobs during the daytime. They've probably been um, taking care of kids, you know, their kids, you know. Um, those things like that during the daytime. And now, as their day is winding down, in the evening of the day, they need to hear God's word. They need they need the peace of God that comes from his word, right? Yeah. So tell, tell me what you would tell them so that they can experience that peace. I would tell them to have faith. Uh, and just remember to always pray and be there for other people to comfort them. Okay. So, I'm just thinking about you. You're doing the book of Philemon, right? Yes. What can you tell me about the book of Philemon? That, um, uh, Philemon... And Paul were friends. Okay. Uh, Philemon was was a uh, slave. Okay. And that uh, Paul had wrote him a letter while he was in prison. Okay. And that's about all I remember right off. All right. Well, whenever you use the word slave, what do you think comes to the people's audience, the mind of the people that are going to be in your audience? Uh, he was... Um, Someone else's property? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of racism going on in America right now, right? And so you use the word slave in the Bible. The Bible's using it. The Bible does not speak against slavery, but yet, how does Paul deal with the slavery issue um, when he sends Onesimus um, back with Philemon? How does he tell him to receive him as? I would say I would even receive him as a just a regular person. Well, as a brother, as he says. And so, by saying that the slave was a brother and saying they they telling uh, Paul is telling uh, Onesimus, I mean a uh, Philemon, you owe me, you know. I I came to salvation through your ministry. You came to salvation basically through my ministry. So if Onesimus has done anything wrong, charge it to my account. But don't forget the fact you owe me, and most of all, you owe God. So that idea of being grateful and thankful for what God does makes it so that you're able to be thankful and grateful for uh, um, to other people. Right? Okay. So what you're saying is that these people who have had difficulties in their life, just as you've had difficulties in your life, 
it is very important for you to pray, to cry out to God. You're, you're saying that while you're praying to God, you still have to be thankful for what you have now. Right? Yeah. Like Pastor Mark says, we got to be thankful for what we have now because it could all be taken away. You know? Yeah. As we learn from the book of Job. And in addition to being thankful, we also have to be, I guess you say, graceful. You know? Remembering what God did for us in salvation should affect the way that we treat other people. Right? Yeah. So... I, I mentioned earlier what was the most important thing for you to tell them. And that was the gospel. Yes. And what did you say the gospel is? That Jesus is God. Okay. Why is that important? Uh, it's important to know that Jesus is God. Whenever you are becoming a Christian, to... Which helps you understand uh, salvation. Okay. Can you explain that a little bit more? Uh, salvation is something that is a gift. Okay. That just like uh, whenever you were born. All right. Um, coming from a uh, What I'm looking for. It's okay. Don't look for the exact word. Just try another word. I guess I'm coming from an egg. Okay. Um, like you're hatched or born. Yeah. Um, it, which, which is a new beginning mm -hmm. to... Now, which salvation is something forever, it's eternity. You never, you never can lose salvation. Okay. So why does Jesus have to be God in order for you to have salvation? Because, um, for number one, God was Jesus' son. Mm-hmm. Um. And the only way for God to come through earth, to earth is come as Jesus. Okay. So you're saying he's the mediator between God and man. Yeah. He had to be God to represent God and he had to be man to represent man. Okay. And so let me ask you a question. You believe Jesus Christ is coming back, right? Yes. All right. Why do you believe that? Oh, uh, he was already on earth once. Okay. And he said that whenever, he, before he was crucified, that he would, would come back to take his sons and daughters back with him. Yes. Um, the only thing that we know as Christians is that he's coming back on a cloud. Mm-hmm. We don't know the Pacific, Pacific way that he's coming back or exactly how he's coming back. But we, but there is a way that we will know he is coming. And that's through, we will hear a trumpet sound. Okay. That would warn us that he's coming back. All right. Good. So why is it important to know that Jesus Christ is coming back? It's, I would say it would be like the Left Behind series. Okay. Uh, so, so it, go ahead. We have to know at every waking moment well, that we have to live as today was the last day. Okay. Um. 
the most important. That, and that's the most important thing. All right. But for us to believe that he's coming back, we have to go back to the the Book of Revelation. Okay. And I would be more specific to to them. Also, First Thessalonians chapter three or four tells about it. Okay. But we have to live as if today was last day. But God, it stated that God is going to come back and take the dead up first. Okay. And then those that are left behind will go back. Okay, let me ask you this question. Being that you're going to be speaking at the mission, why do you think it's important for them people to know who Jesus Christ is, right? What he did on the cross and why he's coming back. Why do you think it's important for them to know all those things? So that they can also, not only to receive him, but that they can also go tell. Okay. So, let's pretend like this video we're making right now is going to be watched by someone that was left behind. What would you tell them? Pretend like you're talking to the mission right now. What would you tell them? I would tell them that if they wanted to go and they say they're not saved. Mm hmm. If they want to go up and see their family in heaven, uh -huh. they have to have their hearts set and right with God. Okay. What is the day, what is the consequence if they do not receive Christ? They, I would have to say they would wouldn't go to heaven. Okay. They would possibly stick remain here on earth. Okay. Or they would possibly go to hell. Alright. So, when you're speaking to the group in the mission, it's possible that some of them may go to hell, right? It's possible. What do they need to hear so that they do not go to hell? They need to, they need to hear the gospel for one. Okay, what is the gospel? That Jesus is God. Okay. What else? Uh, and they need to hear the truth of salvation. Okay. And, and what is that truth? That Jesus, for one, died on the cross for our sins. Okay. Um, that he that he forgave each and every one of us. Okay. And so do you think it's a good idea that whenever you give your message to the mission that you share about how you got saved? Then, um, you know, your testimony, you've yes. gone through hard times. Yes. And then talk about the hope of the gospel, you know? Yes. Uh, about prayer, why you were going through tough times. Um, and then plead with them passionately, you know, that they receive salvation. Um, those ideas right there, do you think that's very important for you to do? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, Brandon, I think you got a pretty good idea about what you're going to say, you know.
I asked you in questions and stuff so that you can make go make an outline. And it's not going to be in this exact order, but basically you have your introduction, right? You have your testimony. And then after your testimony, um, you're going to focus on the passage of scripture about prayer, thankfulness, uh, the grace of God, you know, all those ideas. You're going to explain what's going on with Philemon and Paul and Onesimus and about slavery. And then you're going to relate it back to your audience. Right? Yes. Okay. And then you may, um, make a conclusion. So, sounds pretty good, right? Yeah. Right.